Hey everyone, it's Friday, so welcome to another edition of the Bible, one book, one verse at a time. Now today we're actually going to be looking at two books, the book of First and Second Kings. And the reason we're going to do that is because it was originally one story. And even though First and Second Samuel was kind of one story, there was a clear break as something major happens. Saul passes away and then the kingdom moves to, to David. But there isn't really that good of a clean break in the story of the kings. And so we'll look at the thing as a whole. Of course, the book of the kings starts with David dying and on his deathbed and the kingdom is somewhat in uproar as some of his sons are trying to become king and they're trying to set themselves up and David puts his support behind Solomon and Solomon becomes king and he he begins to build on David's legacy and to to really build an amazing kingdom uh, at one point the story seems to go really well as God asks Solomon and tells him that he can ask for whatever he wants. And Solomon seems to do make a really good decision, and he does. He asks for wisdom to be able to carry out what God has placed before him, which is a fantastic thing for us. And yet, as Solomon's life turns on, or continues on, it seems as though Solomon goes and walks farther and farther away from God. He turns to the practices of those around him rather than the way God might want him to rule. And he does all of the things that the Bible says kings shouldn't do. He does. He collects horses and chariots from Egypt. He builds uh, fortress cities. He musters his men and he actually starts to take slaves for his big building projects. And at the end of his life, uh, he looks much more like Pharaoh than like his father, King David. And in that time frame, he's turned away from God and begins to worship other gods and other things as well. And so God says that the kingdom will be taken, will be ripped from him. And so Solomon's son Rehoboam loses control over the ten northern tribes of Israel and is really only left with Judah as the southern tribe. And that's where you get the division of the two kingdoms, as the ten northern tribes are then ruled by Jeroboam, who sets up different places to worship because he's worried that if they go down to worship in Jerusalem, that they then will turn and return back to be ruled by Rehoboam. And so he sets up idols, calves, actually, in the uh, northern kingdom. And that sets off a trajectory of destruction for those ten northern tribes for the nation of Israel. And eventually within the story, as bad king follows bad king follows bad king, the nation of Israel is conquered by Assyria and then taken out into exile. And in the middle of all of this, even the kings that then show up in Judah uh, aren't all good. They're not all bad, but they're not all good either. And they start to continue this trajectory of walking away from God and following the practices of those who are around them. And in the middle of all of this, we're introduced to the prophets. And the prophets step forward as spokespeople for God to the kings and to the people, urging them to come back to him and calling over and over again for them to trust in their God. But they don't. And they trust in themselves, they trust in their own work, and it leads them into a place where eventually God says, fine, then I'll let you have what you want, which is life away from me. And this brings us to the key verses of these two books. This comes from 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 7 and 8. I figured since there's two books, we'll do two verses. But this is essentially a summary of what has happened so far and the reasons for the exile of the northern tribes, but then can be applied also to the southern kingdom. All this took place because the Israelites had sinned against the Lord their God, who had brought them out of Egypt from under their power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. They worshipped other gods, followed the practices of other nations that the Lord had driven out before them, as well as the practices that the kings of Israel had introduced. So they didn't live as they were supposed to, and they didn't trust God to give them the life that he had promised to give them. And as a result of that, God gave them over to other nations and said, fine, if you want to live without me, then you go live without me. 
It does raise a question, though. What about that promise that was made to David, that his line would reign forever? Well, at the very end of the book, you get this weird little summary. You have this little paragraph that gives a glimmer of hope that maybe David's line isn't completely wasted talks about Jehoiachin, who is one of David's descendants and would have been king in Judah if they had continued to be able to live in Judah. And he's released as a prisoner as the king of Babylon then invites him to sit at his table and to enjoy his meal then for the rest of his life. He's no longer a prisoner. So at the end of the book, you have this glimmer of hope about the line of David may be still continuing, though not necessarily the way in which David and Solomon and the people had hoped. So I hope this has been useful for you. And if it has, then like and subscribe to our channel. Maybe ring the little bell so that you become aware of any new videos that come out. Uh, and I hope that this would be a time in which you would spend some time walking through the book of Kings and just walk and see how pride and power can sometimes go to people's heads and how important it is for us to trust and to follow the way that God has called us to live.